once in a while someone gets everything right and creates this movie, this TV show that manages to capture so well what others fail to achieve that it becomes one of the truly few undeniable gems of cinema and television. And today I'd like to talk about one of those rare gems, The West Wing, a television show that I find unfortunately less and less people to be aware of. To put it simply, way before Game of Thrones took over all of the award shows, The West Wing was the Goliath of television. In fact, for the longest time, it was alongside Hill Street Blues, the record holder of most obtained Emmy Awards. That until very recently, when in 2016, Game of Thrones made history by topping the West Wing's total of 26 Emmy wins with its 38 Emmy wins. And yes, it might not be the most recent of shows to appear on the small screen, nonetheless, I like to think that it is today as much as it was back then. Great, relevant and most importantly a show worth watching. And while it is true that many shows try to capture the substance of what is it like to be in the White House and generally address what is it like to be empowered, the ramifications it has on the individual and its close surroundings as well as on the whole of society, whether that was through comedy or more somber approach, where the West Wing substantially differs, at least in the words of many of its fans, is in its amongst other things successful attempt at providing something more balanced, an almost seamless merge of comedy, drama and even a little bit of action, a golden middle way believed by many to be what sets it apart, as well as its commitment to depict the issues tied to the role of the country's leadership, issues that today are still for the most part very relevant. In fact, the show came in a time when various events had shaken up society and undeniably tarnished great institutions. The studio even delayed the show by a whole year because of how inadequate the timing was. How close did we come to not ever making this pilot the way they sat on it? Uh, uh, very close. Here's what happened, two things in a row. Uh, uh, first of all, the, the first time around, uh, I... Literally, I, I, I wrote Fade Out, typed Fade Out uh, on the pilot and, and a few minutes later, I mean it, a few minutes later, Monica Lewinsky happened, uh, okay? Uh, so there was a general sense, we, we were okay sitting on it. We, we simply can't do this right now. There's, people will giggle. Um, uh, I, you can't do it, you gotta uh, wait a little bit. Interestingly enough, the show's creators later fully embraced these real controversies as plots with the show often mimicking events of the early 2000s. Now, where the show split ways with reality was nested in the way the White House staff approached issues, the story revolved around Jazar Bartlett, a not so typical president of the United States, a very smart, very well-mannered, liberal Democrat, fairly religious family man, with a Nobel Prize in economics, here played by Martin Sheen and his senior staff, composed of the White House Chief of Staff Leo McGarry, his deputy Josh Lyman, the Chief of Communications Toby Ziegler, his deputy Sam Seaborn, the President's personal aide Charlie Young, and the White House Press Secretary CJ Craig. And this is where the show's charm came from. The people. I'll let John Spencer explain it further. I think the intriguing thing about about this hour drama is I think it's about people. I think the backdrop is politics. I, too, I, I think the thing that, that keeps happen. people tuning yeah. in is they love who CJ is. They love who Toby or, or Brad or, or the president. And we don't get to see in real life the, poli the politicians behind closed and I doors. I think that's, and that's a mistake intriguing. on the part of politicians. So do I. You always yeah. see the public face. Yeah. And we, we show them the private face. In my opinion, the show's real achievement lies in the fact that while it could have easily gone full stereotype territory, it chose to take things a step further, to make viewers care about politics and the people doing them. 
What's interesting is that for once the characters were smart, charismatic people, but were not vile. They had principles and stuck with them. He showed a good man and his team tried to do good things and as well intentioned as they might have been. The show didn't give them a free pass, it made them more often than you'd think fail. Damn it! And the battles they were won took a toll on the characters. But you could really sense the bond between the West Wing staff throughout the show that no matter what, they'd stick together for better or worse. And yes, the show wasn't exactly the most realistic portrayal of the White House, but that doesn't really matter. Because it wasn't really its goal, what it actually did is that it gave hope, a glimpse at how things could, and in my opinion, should be.